A 35 to 10 victory at Mount Pleasant. Uh, just kind of what does that mean um, to you, to the program, to uh, go out there and get that win after the loss that we had here against the Chippewas last year? Uh, start with that, and then looking ahead to Toledo, uh, just kind of what the Rockets are going to bring to the table on Thursday. Yeah, I mean, last week was, uh, you know, we, we'd been waiting a year for it. Um, we lost, obviously, last year. The way we lost was the worst part. And uh, from that moment on, our program has changed a little bit as far as how we run it. And it was um, a good moment for us to realize we, we had some shortcomings that we needed to work on, and we've been working on them. Um, we've seen them this year help us, but, but to uh, go out there and go on a road game it, uh, against our rival and play how we did and had to overcome. We had snow, rain, lightning, uh, wind, you know, a lightning delay. And, and uh, you know, we couldn't really get the throw the ball much, you know, but, uh, but we were able to run the ball and control. We got the ball back three times, three turnovers. And uh, considering all the things we were battling against being on the road and, and, um, and the weather and all that, I thought we played a good game, our most complete game. I wish we could have thrown it. It would have been fun to see if we could have got both going at the same time, you know, but uh, it wasn't smart where we were at to, to be throwing it all over the yard. And we tried it through one bubble that I saw below about six feet from the right to left. And I, I put that game plan away and pulled another one out. And um, so I was proud of them, you know, and now, uh, you know, the kids, kids enjoyed it. And now we're into a short week against Toledo. You know, Toledo is, um, I mean, athletically, they're, they're one of the best in the league, if not the best. I mean, their receivers, their running back, uh, their D-line, I mean, they, they're athletic. You know, there's a reason they're the defending MAC champs. So, uh, so we got to be ready on a short week, and uh, my job is to get their bodies back, make sure they feel good and, and mentally sharp. We won't, we won't be hitting a bunch this week. Uh, you know, this is, this is a great opportunity for us to go play a really good team. Can you kind of share the pros and cons of these midweek matching games and just kind of the challenges it presents? The pros and cons. Um, I'd say the pros would be obviously the television and the exposure. You know, uh, I told my guys, I mean, hey, you get to play, we get to play three games in 13 days, which is exciting when you love games, you know, maybe not the greatest for your body. You know, my job is to make sure I'm making it work for their bodies. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, the cons, obviously, it's it's crazy because today's a Tuesday to me. Today was a Tuesday practice, so it's like a Tuesday, although I know it's it's academically a Monday. You know, I make sure I kept hitting it. Today's academically a Monday, guys. Although it feels like a Tuesday out here, make sure you go to your Monday classes, not your Tuesday classes, you know. And uh, I brought I brought Bellamy, and I said, what, what day is it today? And he was like, it took him a minute. He said, it's Monday. He goes, I thought Tuesday, but it's Monday because I got a test today. And I'm like, okay, good. I'm glad you remember that. So, so there's obviously some things, uh, but everyone goes through it, you know. And I, I talk to a lot of NFL coaches that I know and about this short week. I mean, they go Sunday to Thursday, which is even crazier than what we're doing right now. So um, got a bunch of great advice from those guys of how to handle it because the pros do it. I mean, it's, it's happening all over the place. So, um so it's a, it's a challenge, but it's exciting. It's different, you know, and, um, you know, I think we do a good job of adjusting to change. And um, our, we had a great practice today. Tim, what are the physical challenges, and, of course, the mental ones as well, of three games in 13 days? Ooh. Um, physically, it's just getting getting run down, you know, and then you, the weather's changing. People are sniffling. I got the hand sanitizers all over the building right now and vitamin C and just trying to keep them healthy on top of that, you know. So, uh the biggest thing is just try to stay in tune with their bodies and how their legs feel, you know, on, cause we got to play a 60 minute game against two really good teams on these next two games. And, um, so we have to be at a hundred percent, you know, and luckily we're to a point in the season where mentally we're pretty good. I mean, we know what we're doing. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, today was, was a fast day. We, we got, we were sweating today. We kind of got the, they normally on Monday morning do a flush run where you're trying to get, get their muscles going and get, kind of get the game out of their system. And then you practice Tuesday hard, you practice Wednesday hard, and then you kind of pull back for the last 48 hours to get their bodies fresh. So, uh, so we worked them hard today and now we're going to start our 48 hours, you know, so we'll be walking through tomorrow, you know, and, and walking through and a little bit of running on, uh, the, day before the game Wednesday so um, it's hard the biggest thing is mentally you know and that's why for me 
last night when we had our team meeting, uh, I put the whole week up. I explained why we're doing everything. I, I don't think I don't think they're, this generation is an awesome generation. They're extremely intelligent. They they love information, and there's no such thing as over communicating. So I explained why we do everything we do. This is why we stretch like this. This is why we have you take steps like this, and and the buy-in is great that way. You just can't do it because I said so. You know, like it used to be when coach said do something, run through that wall. Okay, you know, uh, it's not like that. And so it's just about communication, explain who I talk to, why this is going to work, why their bodies are going to feel like it's a Monday, but we got to run like it's a Tuesday today. And, uh, and they did. It was one of our better practices of the year. And, um, and then why we're going to pull back and how, how focused we're going to have to be tomorrow, you know, in a walk-through tempo, you know, but having a, a regular Wednesday practice at a walk-through tempo, which will be different. Um, but it's amazing. As long as you take the time to explain it, uh, you know, our guys do a great job. But it's definitely different. Coach, going back to those pros, uh, I know we have a lot of NFL scouts, and I think you've mentioned before yeah. in the year about kind of the exposure uh, our student athletes can get from these midweek games. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. I mean, we the amount of we've had GMs on the sideline, a ton of head scouts on the sideline. That that there's not a lot of games going on this Thursday night. So, uh, and I don't know how many are signed up right now, but the amount of the amount of obviously national exposure, but the amount of scouts that come get to do live evals on these midweek games is through the roof. I and mean, we had a game last year. We had I think uh, two assistant GMs and two GMs on the sideline for a game to see Chooks, and um, so it's a it's a great opportunity because they don't have to pick between the 50 games going on. There's only one or two, you know. So it's uh, it's been a big advantage for us and, and those guys going to play on Sundays. Through eight games and everything he's accomplished, is Levante Bellamy getting enough attention for what he's been able to do? Uh, I, I don't think I don't think he cares about the attention. He wants to win games, you know, and he has not yet made it through a season healthy. And I'm very I mean, we talk about it all the time, you know, and they're making sure that we're not overtaxing him because he's obviously the, one of the most talented guys on the field every game we play, you know, and so. Uh, and he, I think he's getting stronger every time he runs the ball. And, uh, you know, he's he definitely shares a spotlight. That, I mean, our two backs are two different types of backs, obviously, you know. And um, But he's a special player. And he's getting more and more comfortable. And he's getting his pads down. He's not taking big hits. Um, I think he's getting comfortable in our, in our run schemes and uh, doing a great job in pass pro. So, uh, you know, he's going to get his – his time, but I always tell everybody: if you win games, everyone benefits. Ever there's the 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 MAC champion has the most all conference players, and that you get the most accolades. And it really is when you win; those things come along with it. And he is a hundred percent a team guy. Uh, but yeah, he is he is freakishly talented. Alex Gray screw up uh, not too far down the road from Mount Pleasant. Um, could you talk about his performance uh, against the Chippewas on Saturday? I mean, he played, he's been solid all year. You know what I mean? He gets, he's getting more and more comfortable. You know, the one thing about when his transition went from running back to outside linebacker, he was very mechanical trying to do the right thing. And now it's starting to become comfortable. You know what I mean? It's like when you teach a running back how to run, like kind of like Chase Brown, he's a little bit mechanical right now. And eventually he'll make that turn into comfortable and do, do everything loosely. He'll make his cuts smoother and more aggressively. And, and he's to that point now, the last couple of games where he's really playing like he's been a linebacker his whole life, you know, and uh, he's always been a leader. He's always going to be, he's always going to be where he needs to be, but he's starting to make the other plays. He's starting to, to chase things down. He's starting to, you know, understand when I can kind of leave my responsibility, you know, to go help somebody else out because I, I know he's not going to, he's not going to hit my gap. I'll dip underneath and make a big play. And uh, whereas before he just sit in my gap and say, I, he didn't run through my gap, you know, uh, so watching him be a complete player is awesome. That interception, yeah, was the play of the game. I mean, it was – we were in a little bit of a lull in the third quarter, which there's going to be peaks and valleys in every game. And, uh, and bam, he has that interception. And it ignited the entire team, and that, that took us through the end of the third into the fourth. And, uh, or was that in the fourth? Late in the third, early in the fourth, whenever he had his pick. Uh, but I really felt like that was kind of the momentum changer, you know, uh, for us. And uh, – you know, that's a hard position to play. That outside linebacker spot in, in today's offense, in today's spread offenses, I mean, that's the joker. That's the guy. That's who all – I'm an offensive coordinator. I just read him, what's he doing, 
every play I got an eye on him as figuring out what I'm going to do with the ball. John and him stare at each other all at camp to figure out what John's going to do. You know, so it's a hard position because you got to be a space player and you got to be tough enough to come in the box. And, and he's he's having a great, great year. You look at this six game winning streak. What's the biggest difference between where your team is right now and where you are after those two, you know, big time FBS games? Uh, I think I think we're, we're obviously playing with confidence, which is a big thing. Um, I mean, we played two really good teams. You know, we knew coming into the season offensively, we had a lot of talent coming back, but we're running a new offense, you know, and on defense, we we're going to run the same defense, but with nine new players or whatever it was. So I knew it wasn't going to be a, a paved road early on. It was going to be rocky and bumpy. And, and we went through our ups and downs and just kept pressing, kept pressing with them. And, and, uh, and they had faith in the, in the process, you know, and, uh, and, and we're getting better and better and better and better. And so it's, um, you know, like I, talk, I keep going back to the Michigan game. You know, we, we got our, our butts whipped. And, we, and it was one of the greatest things because the way we handled it. We handled it. They came off the sideline. They were not – there were no cracks in the cup. People weren't getting chippy with one another. People knew when they got beat. Yes, Coach, he got me. They knew their responsibilities. Uh, we didn't play our responsibilities great. Um, but we, we took it – like men, you got to lose with class. You got to win with class, you know. And uh, and I I felt like, you know, that was a point where we knew we weren't going to play Michigan's defense every week, you know. And uh, and we knew once we started to get some rhythm with with on offense and defense and special teams. And I think you've seen a, a, a growth every week, you know. And we're going to need it because these next, you know, four weeks we got some really really good teams coming in here. So. Um, I guess the schedule kind of worked out pretty good that way that uh, that these teams were at the end and let us try to figure ourselves out a little bit and uh, but now we, it's time to go so we, we need to be we need to play great games to beat any of these next four teams. Cole's got the ball. I mean, the ball fakes are great. He's doing a good job and he understands he understands our offense. Nine, I threw it nine times. Can you believe that? That's rare for me. Uh, but you know we we had a couple big. Big calls late that he made some good throws and um, and um, he he's just in control. Let's put it that way. He knows what we're doing, why we're doing it. Um, uh, I'm trying to. Th I don't know which touchdown was his, but one of them was his call. He said, "Coach, well, we didn't have it in. We just said we we're running the split zone version of that play, and the end was wrong arm and really hard." And he's like, "Coach, if you ever arc that, he Odell can block the corner, and I'm 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 rolling." And, and I was like, done. So next time we got in the situation, I called it. He walks in and scores. Um, so when, 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 they, when your players start coming to you and start calling touchdowns, you know, uh, that's when you know. That's when, hey, coach, you know, now the next step is I'm going to say, oh, then call it. Don't, you don't need to come ask me on the sideline. Do it right in the moment. When you see it, if you want to change this play, now we're not there yet. If he sees a, a leverage that he doesn't like and wants to tell Bird to go from this to this, you know, we, we need to get to that point. Right now, he's just bringing great information to the sideline saying, hey, coach, I think this would work. And he knows, and I think the whole team knows, that if you if you suggest a play to me, I'm calling it. Like, we're going. We're all for one, one for all. I mean, I, it's, I don't have some magic script, you know. Uh, so, so some of that running was him, his calls. I had a couple runs in for him anyway. And um, I'm sure he's frustrated that he didn't get to throw it much. You know, because it was it was windy. Some of you guys were there. It was miserable, and um, and them having I felt terrible for their guy. You get down and have to throw it in that. I mean, you're just guessing. You're throwing and guessing. You know, and uh, so it uh, he's he's really coming along. You know, and um, that he can play in multiple styles of games. You know, we got to throw it 50, 45 times. He can do that. If we got to run it, he can still make himself. I he's always used to tell him last year to insert himself into the game especially in these big run games like you got to know when to pull it it's got to be timely it's got to be at the right moment when you know that that guy's getting antsy and uh he's really got a feel for that now hey i noticed when you walked in today you were uh, talking about plays with him throwing slants and this so like john said you know once a quarterback always a quarterback the fact that you guys have such good chemistry you know coach and player can you just talk about how that just benefits the well, it helps because I because I played the same position he's playing, you know. So uh, there's some things that that I've I've made the same I've made all the mistakes, 
in in 44 games. And uh, so any anything that when I can see a mistake coming on or a pattern coming on uh, happened at the first half of Bowling Green where I was just like, hey, here's the deal. You're in rhythm, which I preach, and I scream at them if they're not in rhythm. But it was a situation where it was like, hey, they're grabbing us, so we got to forget everything I told you. You need to squeeze it for an extra second so you can throw the ball like you want to throw the ball. Because all the balls had a little bit more air on them because he was trying to do the right thing. And he made the adjustment and shoot, we scored on five of the next six drives, you know. So having the ability to play in all different types of games, zone, man, man where they're grabby, you know, man, off man, press man, like it, the timing changes in a passing game. And and uh, he's a sponge. So so when I suggest this is what I'm seeing, you know, I've, I've done it. Like I, I, I had a bad quarter too. I threw four picks in the first half of a game once, you know. Uh, Coach Cuba was not happy at halftime. <laughs> Let me tell you, I could tell you that story later. Um, what ha what the locker room was like at halftime, but um, but yeah, it, it's uh, it's fun to watch him grow and and really like it's like you said in the run game last week and his suggestions of saying hey this is there I think I, we can get this and uh, you know it's a it's a whole you know he understands the whole offense and what we're trying to do. Uh, one last thing, yeah, how, how do you take advantage of having a Saturday off? I mean, what off? Yeah, There's no such thing as off. No, no. Uh, next Saturday will be uh, Monday. For me, it'll be a Monday. So, because we have seven games to our next game, so uh, Friday when we come in after this game, it will be a Sunday, which is, in the coaching world, Sundays are miserable, Mondays are miserable, Tuesdays start getting a little bit better. I mean, you're working, you're getting home at, you know, midnight on Sunday and ten o'clock on Monday and eight o'clock on Tuesday, and then Wednesday gets better and Thursday's pretty good. You know, date night Thursday if you can want to see your family. Uh, and then Friday you're traveling or going to the hotel, and then you play Saturday's the best day of the week. And um, so, yeah, so for us, the only way we – athletes are creatures of habit. So w if you ask me what today is, I'd say Tuesday because that's the way my mind works, and that's the way all the players work. So, uh, so yes, on fr this academic Friday, uh, it will be a Sunday for us. So the coaches will come in and work all day and get ready for Ohio and be there till who knows when. And then Saturday we'll come in first thing. We'll be putting our game plan together. We'll we'll do what we do on a Monday with the players on Saturday. Sunday's our work day, which will be a Tuesday for us, but a academic Sunday, you know. Um, so yeah, it's it's that's the only way. <laughs> it's the only way because uh, we get confused even when we're talking to one another, coaches. And when they say Tuesday, I'm like, are you talking about our Tuesday or the or the calendar Tuesday? And it gets all jumbled, you know, and. Um, so, yeah, we will be – it is weird because you forget. You get up in the morning, like, on a Sunday, which is a Tuesday, and you'll drive to work, and there's no one on the road. And you'll be – it takes you a minute, and you're like, what? It's Sunday today, you know, but it'll be a Tuesday to us. Um, then, finally, after Ohio, we get a break. Ohio, I'm going to give the guys some time off. The guys that go see their families will do some recruiting. That'll be different. But, um, but Thursday to Thursday will be, for us, a, a regular week. Remain off a 35 to 10 win at Central Michigan. A opponent you didn't get to play against last year, um, and this year throwing was a little tough. But obviously you still uh, did a great job game management wise and got in the end zone with your legs a few times. Can you just talk about the feeling of taking away a victory uh, in Mount Pleasant, and then just talk a little bit about the challenges Toledo is going to bring uh, to us? Yeah, you know. Um... Saturday was a great win to go up there in Mount Pleasant and get a win against our rival and kind of get our uh, trophies back. So it was a great win, you know, and the most important thing was that, he won, uh, that we won the game. You know, if I can throw uh, nine passes every game, uh, game and we still win, that's that's perfectly fine with me. So um, in Toledo this week, short week, um, very physical team. Uh, they have a lot of athletes, so um, it's going to be a challenge for us. And uh we're going to get our bodies right. Our training staff does a great job of uh, getting our bodies back, um, especially in this short week. So uh, we'll be ready for Thursday. You went on some uh, long playoff runs at uh, South Christian High School. Um, had you ever seen weather conditions comparable to what you saw Saturday? Um, the Saturday was probably top five coldest, worst con conditions. But uh, I've been in probably some colder games before just because of the you know late November uh, playoff games in high school too, uh, one specifically I remember. But yeah, that was definitely up there with the rain and everything um, before the delay. The rain kind of makes it a little worse, but uh, yeah, it was definitely up there.
your like typical schedule like just in a week and then how does this kind of throw that out of whack a little bit um the biggest thing is um we just, i kind of have just less time to watch some film on my own you know i kind of have to you know um I'll have to stay up maybe a little bit later and watch some film and just get my mind around what Toledo wants to do defensively. Um, and then the other thing the midweek games throw off is just school. You know, um, we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to miss uh, class on Thursday. And then, uh, luckily, you know, the weekend we have a little bit more time to get caught up and things like that. But I would just say, like, you know, kind of getting your my mind wrapped around what the defense is gonna do um, because we have a couple less days. Um, and then just schoolwork, I kind of got, got to get ahead, you know. So that's the biggest thing for me. No, problem with that. You're, you're <laughs> a scholar, so. no not too bad. It's, it's fine. But. John, I, I talked to or asked Coach Lester about the chemistry that you have. He's obviously calling the plays this year. But you two just seem to be on the same page. You know, he's a former quarterback. Can you talk about that relationship and, and how you guys have developed that over the year? Yeah. Um, yeah, me and Coach Lester have a great relationship. Um, you know, like he was talking about, him being a former quarterback is, is great, you know, because he can help me make adjustments faster. And, you know, the other thing, too, is we, we know what each other are thinking. So, you know, when he's calling plays, you know, he knows what I'm seeing out on the field and what I'm thinking. And, you know, when I see him call a formation, you know, sometimes I can almost guess what, what play he's going to call, you know. So it's just great to be on that same page together and, you know, we just kind of do, to continue to develop that over in the spring, starting in the spring and then throughout the summer too, just talking football. Um, so our relationship has uh, has been great for us this year. John, we've talked a lot about the running game that you have behind you, but you look at Levante and he's top 10 in the country in rushing yards. Jamari's got nine touchdowns. How good have they been from your angle? Oh, our running game has been great, you know, and. Like you said, our running backs are tremendous, but it's also an attribute to our O-line. You know, they they just continue to wear people down. You know, even in the first quarter, we might not get quite as many yards, but they just continue to wear people down. You know, you see, you've seen that in the fourth quarter of games where we just continue to, you know, mash people down. And, you know, anytime we can get the, the ball in our playmakers' hands, you know, Bellamy, Bogan, D. Eskridge, Jaden Reed, however we can get them the ball, um, in space, and they're going to make people miss and make big plays. So that's a huge part of our offense. Speaking of the offensive line, um, you're obviously good run blocking, but pass blocking has been exceptional this year. I can't remember more than just a few times that you've been sacked. Obviously, you're very elusive and can extend plays, but, but talk about that part of the offensive line and how much time they're giving you to make you know, checkoffs. Yeah, you know, the offensive line, like you said, running, run blocking is great, but pass blocking has been tremendous as well, you know. Um, and, and part of that's timing too, you know, with uh, myself and the receivers. You know, the receivers, if they can get open in a couple seconds, you know, that helps the offensive line too because then they don't have to hold their blocks as long. But, yeah, they've been tremendous. They, they give tremendous effort. And, you know, I think what part, part of what helps their pass blocking is just their run blocking because – the defensive linemen have to respect the run game. And so they don't really, you know, shoot up field quite as much because they know if, if we run, run the ball that they're going to be screwed if they if they keep getting up the field. So that's a big part of it too. I'm sure it was tough watching all those games you had to sit out last year. Um, was there anyone that stuck out more than the others? I, I'm just thinking about Toledo and just you guys had a chance in that game late. And, uh, yeah, I would say, you know, all the games that, you know, it stunk being out at all the games that I missed. But, yeah, I would say the two were probably central, you know, partly because it's one of our rivals. And and then Toledo, like you said, um, just because we got beat pretty good in that game. And, you know, they were they went on to win the MAC championship. So that adds something to it as well. I know some schools refer to that as a revenge tour. When you get to face the teams that you lost to a year ago, and obviously for you, as you alluded to, not playing, in those games, you took care of business in Central. How much do you want to be on the field for this game on, on Thursday? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I definitely want to be out there. You know, and I don't. I don't know if it really. You know, losing to them last year adds too much to it. You know, because we kind of have that goal in mind of uh, eventually going on to get that MAC championship. So you know, we're just taking it one game at a time, and you know, no matter whether we beat them last year, lost to them last year, you know, we still have that same goal. So. Our goal is just to go one and one and zero each week. So, 
John Jamari Bogan's, uh, one of his favorite sayings is the best is yet to come. Coach Lester talks about the fact that yeah, it's great to get a win, but yet we still have so much room for improvement. Can you talk about the game to game improvements and, and where you still need, do you think, or where you can get better? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you said, it's, there's almost nothing better than getting a win, but still knowing that you can get better. Um, so that's been a great feeling for the last, you know, however much, six weeks or something like that, that's been that we've won and, but we still have so much room to grow. I think, um, offensively just, you know, continuing to get better at third down. I think we've struggled occasionally there on third down percentage. So that's something we can get better at red zone and a few games we've struggled in the red zone. Um, I th I'm thinking Bowling Green in the uh, first half. I think we were down there a few times and we didn't come away with points. Um, so things like that, um, we can just continue to get better at. Yeah, same question I asked Coach Lester. Like, do you, do you have different plans for your Saturday? Do you get to like watch some college football, or do you? Uh, yeah, that's definitely a, that's going to be a positive about this Saturday. Yeah, we'll probably I'm guessing we'll probably still have football in the morning. Um, but yeah, we'll get to watch basically football all day. That's definitely a positive of playing on Thursday. Get to watch some of the big time games and things like that. Going to be able to get to the South Christian game on Friday. Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. At home, I think it's at East Kentwood, and yeah, I'll get to go watch the my uh, high school play. That'll be fun. Hey, John. Um, you have 16 rushing or 16 passing touchdowns this year. Six rushing touchdowns, and I believe three of those are when Odell Miller. John Keenan, you know, like kind of the sandwich there. What's it feel like to have Odell pick you off and push you behind John in that situation with quarterback sneak? Yeah, it's a great – I don't really have to do anything, to be quite honest with you. I just, I just take the snap, and sometimes Odell – sometimes my feet aren't even on the ground anymore because he picks me up. Um, so, no, that's – you know, I can't really take any credit for those touchdowns because I don't really have to do anything. But, uh, no, yeah, that's, that's great.